Hmm. So if you're, if the results you are getting on, let's say you're in business and you're just not achieving what you want to achieve, you have to go inside to find out why. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's your inner self that's creating the outer self. Right. So if you're not happy and or content, it's another car isn't going to do it. Another shirt isn't going to do it. Another pair of shoes isn't going to do it. Another child isn't going to do it. You have to go inside and find out what the problem is. And sometimes it's it's a simple tweaking of changing the way you look at things. I love that saying by Dr. Wayne Dyer. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm-hmm. And, and well, sometimes it's as simple as that. It's as simple as waking up in the morning and being grateful for what you have instead of wanting and wanting. And that's the other thing that I started to do that really helped me was to journal. Ah, uh, yes. And I have to tell you, I didn't want to journal because to me it was like, oh, my God, something else I have to do. <laughs> but I finally found that if I took 10 minutes at the beginning of the day or any time of the day that I had the time and I just sat down and I journaled, um, I happened to hear a speaker once, and I, for the life of me, can't remember his name. But he said, talk to God. And I said, talk to God? What do you mean, talk to God? Well, ask God what he wants you to be doing. Ask God how he wants you to feel. Now, remember that the, the answers you get really come from yourself. But when you phrase it that way, it feels very different. Or you can just journal, talk about your feelings, talk about, you know, what you're frustrated about, what you love in your life, whatever it is. Just jot down something every single day. Just get out whatever's inside of you. And then the other thing that people forget to do is you have, you, you create or achieve successes every day. You just don't realize that that's what they are. A success doesn't have to be something huge like earning a million dollars. All a success is is, a, is an action taken. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give a really loose analogy on this one. If you move the ruler from the left side of the desk to the right side of the desk, that's a success. It's an action. One of the things I hated doing, and I use the word hate very loosely, by the way, I don't like that word really, but I really disliked emptying the dishwasher (laughs) um, before I went to bed. And so if I emptied it before I went to bed, that was a success. Yes, amen to that. Right, so, you know, a success doesn't have to be something huge. And so I always encourage my clients, to write down two or three successes every day. You know, did you meet somebody for coffee? Did you enter the dishwasher? What did you do? Did you, whatever it was. Just write down two or three things every day in the same journal. And also write down two or three things every day that you are grateful for. Mm-hmm. Because gratitude is really, really important. hmm Yes, I agree with that. Another another thing I've seen people do um, besides a gratitude journal uh, has been become very popular, and I'm I'm happy of that because so often we tend to uh, dwell on what goes wrong instead of what goes right. So I love that whole idea. And you know, before you go to bed tonight, I don't. Some people say a, a nightly prayer, and so many times, and I remember when my children were little, when I was little, I would ask God for things. I never thanked him. Mm-hmm. And You'd ask God for things? Yes. I would ask God to um, take care of my parents or for a new bicycle for my birthday. And when I was raising my children, I made sure that we stuck in a thank you in there. Right, absolutely. And, you know, the first book, although I wrote my own book, I was also um, a contributing author in another book years before that called Giving Gratitude. Mm. 
And one of the people that was in that book who wrote a chapter was Dr. Wayne Dyer. Ah, wow. You know, I'd known for a long time about gratitude. Um, We forget. I I, I can't tell you that I'm always 100% perfect when it comes to all those things. But you do the best you can. And perfection is just something that doesn't exist. Mm Mm-hmm. If, if women have a tendency to reach, in fact, uh, I was talking to a coach last week, and I'm, uh, I'm very transparent with things, and I was having a little challenge getting this new business off the ground because it's something so different than what I'm used to doing. And he said to me, have you thought about the fact that it's because you think it has to be 100% perfect, mm-hmm. and if you can't do it that way, it won't work. And he hit me right between the eyes with that question. Right. Because it had been so long since I'd had to think about something like that. After all, I've been a coach for over 20 years and a clinical hypnotherapist for, for nearly 25 years. So I knew I could do that, but this was something so different. I wasn't sure, and I was questioning myself. Right, right. When he said that, so please, if you are thinking you have to get, and I'm really talking to your listeners, if you have to get things perfect, stop it. (laughs) Because it doesn't work. All it does when you think you have to be perfect is give you stress. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And and it gives you that fear of you can't let go until it is. And so when is the right time? It's the right time is not when it's perfect because it's never going to be perfect. Make it a work where you see that you need to change certain things while it's in the process. Exactly. Right. You know, think, think about people who create, and I know because I used to do this, People who create, if anybody had told me that I would ever be able to write a book and that it would get published and that it would become a bestseller, I would have said they were out of their mind. (laughs) Because for me, unless everything was perfect, it couldn't possibly be done. But fortunately, I had a really good book coach. And, you know, when people make products, they go over and over and over. I know because I've well, I've coached people and I said, you know, it's not come. You're not doing it. Well, it's not perfect yet. Right. And Tom Antion, who's a very big marketing expert, said years ago, "Better done than perfect." Oh, that's excellent. Better done than perfect. I love that. Because when I looked at some of the stuff he put out, there was definitely no such thing as perfection there. <laughs> but the information was there. Mm-hmm. And so that was something I kept in my mind. I don't have to keep writing an article over and over and over again. Right, right. I don't, keep, I don't need to keep doing something over and over and over again. And that's something that's very, very important to learn. It is. Yes, it is, really. And, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so grateful for a spell and grammar check. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because I I used to drive myself crazy. Oh, is that phrased right? (laughs) And now it kind of just checks it for you. And if you want it to be like that, you can leave it like that. And if you take poetic license, so be it, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, yeah, being from being English, grammar to me and spelling is really important. Mm-hmm. But of course, it isn't important to everybody. Right, right. So I can't judge people because they don't write um Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, they write your instead of the short version of you are. They do that. To me, that's totally not okay. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't have to write it like that. So (laughs) it's okay. Right, right. I like that. I like that. So um, I think we have to be flexible. 
<laughs> yes. And I, that's one of my pet peeves too, or we, we're instead of, you know, it's just W-E-R-E and you have to kind of read the sentence a couple of times to realize that they meant we are. Those, that's one of my pet peeves as well. Or, and there's so many words like that. And if you let that if you judged everything that you read by those standards, oh, that would be terrible. You could drive yourself crazy. Well, exactly. So, you know, if I wanted to, every time I go on Facebook, I could pick somebody yes. up on their spelling, definitely. Yep. Because I've never seen such appalling spelling. But um, what, what would be the point? <laughs> right. Right. They don't need to take it as judgment. Right. And I don't want people to feel that judge them. Right. So I don't say anything. Do I know that it's wrong the way it's spelled? Oh, definitely. But that's the way they do it. Okay. So that's fine. Mm-hmm. If, that's, if they're okay with it, it doesn't matter to me. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what. You are a delight and I'm so happy that you were my guest today on Diva Dialogue. So what's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. I I can see that. I th- do you wear purple clothes? I do if I can find them. I I bet you look good in purple. So if I you like blue. I, I like purple and I like blue. Very good. So those cool colors. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Definitely not in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I don't want to live. <laughs> so that's my wicked English sense of humor coming out. <laughs> um I honestly don't know. You know, I'm 75. I'm happy with my life. If my grandchildren weren't here where I am, because I do have six grandchildren in their teens, um, I would move away from uh, from California and live somewhere different in the country. I don't know that I would go and live in another country. I don't think I could go back to England. Truthfully, I think I have way too much growth to do mm. that now. Um you know, I love the, I still have my friends, I still have my family there, and I do go back when I can. But if I was going to live somewhere else, it would be somewhere else in this country that would be more countryfied, where people connect more. You know, I don't know if you know LA or where, where, yes, where, do. where do you live? I'm in Michigan, but I spent 20 years in California, and my oldest son lives in Long Beach. Okay, so people here do not connect. Mm -hmm. You know, people just don't connect the way that I consider connection. You know, I lived all my life until I was 38 in England, um, and everybody was very close. You made friends, you were close, you knew your neighbors. It was like that. It doesn't work like that in L.A. It's, It's too spread out. It's so too spread out, and the vibe is different. It's, it's just different. Well, people, I find that it's very important to me at my age for people to be authentic. Right. And I know when they're not. And if they're not, I'm very transparent. And I do that because I think it's necessary. That means that I pick people in my life who are willing to listen to the truth. And even with clients, I will always, and I have done this since day one, if you're coming to me because you want to hear what you want to hear, Mm -hmm. I'm the wrong person for you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I can't help you if I just tell you whatever you want to hear. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So I've moved somewhere else probably in this country. I don't like the heat, so the heat here in California is appalling most of the year. Um, But until my grandchildren at least go to college, and God willing that I'm still around, then I won't be moving anywhere. I'll be staying where I am. I'm happy where I am, honestly. Good. And that's what's most important, isn't it? Absolutely. Life is how you make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, yeah. You're either going to allow life to throw everything at you and it